there. This is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. I appreciate you uh, stopping by. Uh, tonight I'm going to show you how easy it is to paint uh, glasses with acrylic paint. It's actually the Folk Art Enamels and I'm not sure yet. It might be a mix of the um, multi-surface as well. But it is acrylic paint. This is gloss acrylic paint, and it is a folk art enamel paint. And this is Italian sage that I'm starting with on the glass. I'm taking you along, kind of doing it a little bit differently this time, taking you along as I'm actually painting the glass. So right now, I put the base on, started by taping the glass, and then I used a three-quarter inch scruffy brush. And I'm going to actually use the scruffy brush, brush to base coat the glass. And my plan is to do a design around the top, the top of the paint. But you'll have to stay tuned to see what I end up painting around the top. So if you ever wanted to paint on wine glasses and you weren't sure really how to do it, you basically either find a design that you want to do or you know you look on the on the internet and find something that seems to be um, in your level of painting skill and go go for it. Um, very easy to do. These are great glasses to entertain with. They make awesome gifts for really any occasion. Anybody that you know that likes to drink wine this is a great way for them to drink their favorite beverage in a special glass. Now, um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel and you like this video, I ask that you make sure that you do subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. There will be a bell that comes up. And that is a notification bell that will let you know whenever I post something new. Um, right now, you know, I'm trying to do at least one video a week. And I really am trying to plan this out. I need to actually get on, on the ball and figure out a specific day that I'm going to be doing it by. Um, kind of backtracking a little bit and starting over with, not really starting over, but learning how to actually optimize my videos. So as you can see, this is pretty easy to do. You're just basically tapping. Now as you're tapping, you may find that there's some bubbles that pop up. I would try to hit them down, bust the bubbles, so that when you bake these, they don't bubble up and pop. Now, the theory is behind the, this type of paint is that the thicker you apply it, the more durable it will be. But you have to be careful too that you're not putting it on too thick or it definitely will bubble if you're baking it. This paint does not require baking. It can fully cure by air drying for 21 days. Now, in all honesty, that to me that doesn't mean that you can't use it. Other people may disagree. Um, it will dry, but I would definitely hand wash it during that time period just to ensure that the design does not get messed up. If you're worried about that, then let it dry fully for the 21 days and then use it. Also, get a lot of questions. People want to know about spraying the glasses with some kind of a sealer, varnish, or whatnot. You're really not, with the folk art paints, you really are not required to do that. That's not a step with painting these glasses, whether you're baking them or you're air drying them. I, however, have gotten into the habit of putting the, I want to make sure this is the one, right one, but the Mod Podge, which is dishwasher safe gloss. I really like this. It, it does make a nice seal on my glassware, and then, you know, I'm not worried as much about the paint chipping off. I do need to tell you, though, if you hand wash your paint, your 
and treat your glassware like fine china, it's going to last for a long time. I have have a cup that's actually a coffee cup that has been honestly not really t paid much attention to as far as how it's being handled. It's just been thrown in the sink, um, I don't know, put on the bottom rack of the dishwasher which is not recommended. Definitely, definitely a, a, not a thing to do. And really the design is not so bad after all the misuse really you know it has not been taken uh, taken care of as far as that goes as far as following you know the do's and don'ts of hand painted glass you just gotta you know keep in mind this is not something that's like um, something that you would be doing clay that's fired in an oven you know a hot 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 you know kiln kind of oven. This is just hand painted glass that's if anything baked in your your home oven. So treat it treat it with kindness and it's going to last a long time. Now I did come down getting back to the glassware here come down a little bit on the stem. Personally I, I ran out of tape I'll be honest with you. I would tape it to get a clean line here tape it and then uh, paint but I'm just I'm going to end up dotting it or doing some kind of a finish on it so I'm not too worried about it with the jagged lines or if it's not completely even it's fine and I'm just kind of going back over not only looking for bubbles but trying to put a texture in this I want the texture if you want it smooth, you know, you can use a different type of a brush and, and put it on smoothly. I'm intentionally wanting, wanting to see there's a bubble right there. And I need to make sure I pop it. All right, I think, I think I've got good coverage. So what I'm going to do now is come back to where I started the tape. And I am going to pull this, well that's not good. I am going to pull this off while it is wet and not allow it to dry because often what happens is the paint will dry to the tape and when you're doing this it will pull, pull the paint off. So that's why if it's a situation where you are able to do that, you know sometimes there are situations where you're not able to pull it off at the time you know go ahead and get it off of there. So here we here we are with this step so far and I actually did put a heat gun to this one so it's not as bumpy anymore but anyways I will be back with the next set once I get this to dry because I want to make sure it dries since I'm actually going to be painting over the top of it. So the next part of this glass is going to be to add a branch going around the top part of the design, or I shouldn't say design because it really isn't a design, um, just the top part of the green paint and going a little bit into the top part of the glass. You still have to keep in mind that you really should be leaving some room for people to drink from the glass, although honestly it's really not going to hurt them if they drink from that glass. Paint is non-toxic. Alright, so basically what I'm using for this part of the the design is a number four round brush. I am using the Folk Art Enamel Warm White. Real Brown, which is Folk Art's multi-surface paint and then wicker white and that's a folk art enamel. Alright, so I'm basically just starting you know really just starting anywhere here on the glass doesn't matter. Uh, just kind of rotating between the browns, the off the off white or warm white I should say and then coming back in and adding some more of the real brown and just 
going around the glass and just kind of going up and down as I go around it. And then I can come back in and add some darker brown uh, to the design. So it's pretty easy. And again, the hand painted glass does not have to be difficult to do. Um, these are great if you want to do a craft with your gal pals. Have them over some night to maybe drink their favorite beverage out of a painted glass. If by some chance somebody isn't actually a wine drinker, you know, there's so many other glasses on the market. It doesn't have to be a wine glass. You know, I've done these glasses actually, a relative that their daughter throughout the years has enjoyed getting the painted glass from me. And I'll do different glasses, not necessarily wine glasses, but sometimes I've given her, you know, a fun little glass, but she doesn't drink wine or champagne out of them because she's, she's too young. But, you know, little kids, they, they like special glasses too. You know, like I said, you can actually do just regular, you know, water drinking glasses. It doesn't have to be a, a, an alcoholic beverage. I guess when you're doing the vine, I think the vines, or the branch part of the vine is very, just kind of, you know, flows. Doesn't have to be anything like really major, uh, just kind of sporadic. And like I said, you just see that I'm kind of rotating and adding, adding some different color, not different colors as far as red, white, and blue kind of thing. It's just more of the warm white, the wicker white, and just traveling about the glass around it as I go. Now, so far, uh, if you like this video, make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Hit that bell that comes up. That is a notification bell, which means whenever I post a new video, you will be alerted to it. And then you can choose if you wish to view it at that time or save it for later. Once you're through watching this video, because you want to stay tuned um, and see what design I end up with, because this is not, not finished by any means, uh, make sure that if you like this video, you share it with your friends. Give them the opportunity to view it. Make sure you give me a big thumbs up if you like the video. I would appreciate it. Now, in the comments below, tell me what you how you think I will finish this glass. What kind of a finish do you think I'm going to put on it as far as what am I going to add to these branches? Will it be something as a floral design of some sort? Do you think you're going to find that I just do a leaf pattern around it? There are so many options, you know. I think painting the, painting the kind of a branchy kind of a design around the glass though. So pretty. Just so, so pretty. Kind of reminds me of winter though. Which, you know, we're just getting into spring and summer. So I don't want to push, push that on us too soon. I haven't mean, gotten to enjoy any nice weather here, really. I mean, we've had a few days, but we've just been plagued with so much rain. So much rain. I'm so done with the rain. I don't like it at all. And we just kind of connect this side here and then just bring the vine around here and just make it kind of go over, kind of go over 
as if they're just meeting right here. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear your comments though of what you think, how you think I'm going to finish this. Will it be with flowers? Or will it be with leaves? What do you think you're going to find when you come back? So you have to stay tuned. You have to keep watching in order to see. And that will be a little special treat for you at the end. So you have to watch the video in order to see what that might be. I think I'm just going to leave it as this, not this. A little. Alright, so there you go. So stay tuned for the next part. And until then, I will see you in a few. Alright, so. I got both of these painted with my vine, so they're ready for the next step. They've, they've had some uh, time to be able to dry for me to finish uh, and move on to the next step, which now I know I asked you to comment below if you think I'm going to just finish it with leaves or do anything else to it. So I'm kind of anxious to see what kind of responses, if any, I got. Alright, so this point here, I am going to add some leaves to it. And just kind of go around each glass and see what I can do here. I'm going to go into having the wiggle ones, the wiggly leaves, and this one if you notice is dark on one side and light on the other. And I run that through there. Isn't that pretty? I just love the combination. Now, I think I forgot to mention this. I am using citrus green and my favorite thicket green. The thicket is the Folk Art Enamel. Citrus green is the multi-surface. For the purpose of painting these leaves, I am using a flat brush, number 12, which is the plaid one-stroke brush. Now, we will continue, and I'm just going to be going around, and I'm just going to rotate these leaves so that they're not all the same color as far as how... The paint is applied, meaning like now this one is green on both sides, light green, excuse me, they're all green. And I'm going to do that. Now I'm still trying to make sure that I don't hit this rim, so you do have to keep that in mind. Now I think on this one, I am going to come down here. And this one is just going to be all green, dark green. I'm sorry, I keep saying that. Dark green. And since we're doing it on a pretend branch, I'm going to be doing them, some of them upside down, some of them front facing. I'm just rotating them. If you want your leaves to be smaller, you can use a smaller brush. Since I'm a crazy fanatic about leaves, I am going to be doing it the way I'm doing it now. Okay, so there's a lot of different leaves. And make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And when that little bell pops up, make sure that you hit on that because that will give you a notification whenever I post something new. 
with the notification. You, know, you can silence it so that you don't actually have to um, look at it right at that time. Save it for later. Uh, whatever you want to do. I'm hoping that you are enjoying my painting. Just keep in mind that this is all meant to be for people that have that have not really painted much. Alright, so let's go on this dude. The different, you know, there's some that are considered, you know, one stroke kind of leaves, which is bait. So we've kind of gone around our leaves. And then, and like I said, keep in mind I'm rotating between the tubes a little bit. And this might be a nice spot where you put in some of the little pearly hues. And I do scrape my paint off. I haven't washed my brush since I was painting the this. Of course, you might want to find out if they like red wine or white. Good luck. 